and that's about it for the slider notice now we need to style a header tag which is going to go inside of here uh, obviously we don't just want this text uh, hanging around at the top of this div we want a header to be in the middle of the document so I'm going to go ahead and style slide notice header 3 so any header 3 tags that appear within the slide notice div uh, will take this style and that is position relative um, padding we're going to set to 0 pixels and the margin we're going to set to 0 pixels as well that's important uh, so we don't get the padding that's uh, default uh, for headers and then the top I'm going to set to 25% so this will uh, align it in the middle of this div okay so at the moment we've just got some text inside here let's go ahead and create some header tags now eventually inside of here uh, will be the replaced uh, text that we're going to supply uh, our notice function with when we create it. So for the moment you can just see we've got the text here. We've got it aligned in the center of this div and we haven't got any padding around it. It's important to note that if we were to take out this padding in this margin option uh, that we get some kind of padding and we uh, the alignment's all wrong. So we want the padding and the margin to zero pixels. Okay, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is actually create our notice function. So remember, when we uh, click our button, we do whatever we have to do, and then we call the slide notice function. And the slide notice function is going to take a text parameter. So let's just go and call this, although we haven't defined it. So I want to call slide notice. And inside here, I want to supply it with some text. So obviously, we've associated all actions inside of this function uh, with saving user details. And therefore, we can go ahead and uh, create some text in here. So uh, your settings have been saved. Now, obviously, if you were updating user sessions, you would ensure that user settings have been successfully updated before you called this function. So, for example, you could go ahead and uh, maybe create some kind of if statement, uh, which would check whether uh, a, an HTTP request had been successful, uh, and, and uh, you could output an appropriate error message. So, for example, if the settings hadn't been updated, uh, and that was in a particular block, you could uh, adjust the message accordingly, and you could call this more than once as well. So you could call it twice on a page, but obviously, depending on the result of the settings that are being saved, uh, it would be output in a different way. So now that we've called the function, it doesn't ac actually exist yet, we want to define this inside notice.js. So let's go ahead and define the function. Uh, again, this is called slide notice, and we take some text in here. Okay, so this text here is going to be taken into account inside of this block, and we are going to uh, change the contents of this div, and then slide it down, and then we're gonna delay for a while and slide it up. So we've got the, we need to have the display on this set to none. So back to our um, style.css file. Uh, and now you can see that nothing uh, here. When we click save, nothing happens because we haven't done anything inside our slide notice function, uh, which is called when this button is clicked. So inside notice.js, we want to go ahead and actually uh, show this um, slider. So we reference this as slide notice. Remember our div is called slide notice, so we want, we're want we using a selector to select this div. Now we want to go ahead and do something with it. So we can just first of all say show. So this will, this will uh, when we click this button, uh, obviously we're calling this function. When this function is called, we're going to show slide notice. So let's go ahead and test it out, click save. You can see that this um, div is now shown. So that's the first part of it. We've enabled the button to show this particular um, div uh, based on this function. But now we want to make it uh, obviously uh, applicable to you know the tutorial, the what we're actually doing. So what we want to do is we want to apply some HTML to this div. And the HTML is going to be some header tags. So some header three tags. Remember we specifically styled header three tags to work within this. And uh, let's go ahead and append uh, just in the middle of these pluses. So we're outputting a header three tag and then some content and then another header three tag. And in this case, it will be text, the text that we supplied to the slide notice function here. So now that that's happened, uh, we can go ahead and show that again. So we are appending on HTML and then we are binding show to that. So now what's going to happen is when we click save, uh, we have this message appear, your settings have been saved. 
So now what we want to do is actually animate it. So instead of show, we're going to use slide down. And what this is going to do, it's just going to change the animation. There are various properties you can define within here, but we're not going to be looking at those uh, in this tutorial. So now when we click save, you see that slid down quite nicely. The animation has taken place uh, and the slider is at, at its height, which is 50 pixels. Now what we want to do is slide it back up again. So if we were to use, say, slide up, uh, this would actually slide the div up into its uh, into the top of the document. Uh, but it's, the problem is, is it does it instantly. So as soon as the first animation is finished, the second animation kicks in and slides this back up again. So inside here, we want to bind on the delay uh, property or the delay function. And we want to give this a specific time. And the time is in milliseconds. So I'm going to choose uh, one, uh, 1500 milliseconds. Um, and what that will do is it will slide it down and then slide back up again. So now that we've done this, we're essentially done. It was extremely easy to implement this uh, just by creating this function and allowing this button uh, to call this function uh, once it's been clicked. So what happens if we want to go ahead and create another button, for example? Uh, let's go ahead and create another button next to this save button. And now I'm going to demonstrate how easy this is to actually use with multiple buttons. So the type of this is a button. The value of this is, uh, let's just say, uh, let's just go ahead and say delete account, for example. I mean, we're not actually going to be creating this functionality. Uh, and we'll give this an ID as well of delete account. So now that we've done this, we have this delete account button, which we can now apply the same uh, function to. So inside buttons.js, we want to go ahead and reference um, delete account, which is the button, and we append the same uh, event handler to this. And inside here, we create a function, pull these down just so we can read it a bit better, and we want to go ahead and slide notice. Okay, so uh, now what we can just do is say uh, your account has been deleted. Obviously, you wouldn't delete the account straight off, but uh, that's nothing to do with the tutorial. It's just to demonstrate the slider. We now have this delete account button. When I click on it, your account has been deleted. So just in like 10, 15 seconds, we've implemented this delete account button. Uh, when we click the save button, we get a different message coming up. So overall, this, uh, the benefit of using this function and allowing this text to be passed to it will allow us to create this nice animation here and putting these header three tags uh, just inside of uh, this uh, div allows us to call it upon any button click. So we can just call this function uh, multiple times in our application without having to replicate this code, which is essentially the point of a function. So you can see how easy it is to implement this. We've used quite a lot of CSS, but it's it's very basic CSS that you know just allows us to uh, create a div at the very top of the page uh, that's going to overlap all the other content. Uh, so you could probably now go ahead and implement this into your website uh, extremely easily.